What's up, Cage Nation? It's Kevin Jackowitz here. Um, I have to do this video because I did a live stream of the Hall of Fame ceremony for WWE, and it was blocked. Um, I, I actually couldn't believe this. Uh, like, it wasn't blocked because I showed any video footage. It wasn't blocked because of any music, because I muted all the music as soon as it started. It was literally blocked because you could hear Goldberg talking in the background for a couple of minutes and well that's just sad um, I'm no Meltzer I don't do this to make money I just try to share my love of WWE and unfortunately it's gotten so corporate that you can't even do that because God forbid they think anybody possibly could make a few pennies off of this somewhere down the road well that's fucking sad. It really is. Um, I hate how corporate the world has become. So, all I get to do is talk about the Hall of Fame. Uh, so, sorry about that little rant to begin with, but the Hall of Fame itself, I really like the lineup this year. Um, it had a couple of childhood favorites and a couple of people that are absolutely deserving. Um, you start off right away with a couple of people who are absolutely deserving. Uh, Edge and Christian come out and they're inducting the Dudley Boys. And of course, Edge and Christian, the Hardy Boys, and the Dudley Boys, famous for TLC. Um, Edge is always very funny. He's telling some stories. He's got everybody la laughing. Sorry, Hiccup. <laughs> um, and so the Dudley Boys come out. And I think the coolest thing about this was toward the end of their little speech, you know, they're talking about how. Nobody in the TLC matches would really be as big as they are, Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian, or the Dudley Boys, without the other two teams. And so, they bring out the other two teams, they call Edge and Christian from the back, and Hardy Boys from the audience. And you've got all three teams standing up on stage, which is the first time they've been together like that, I think they said in 15 years. So it was very cool. I mean, I remember our WrestleMania X7, where... They had TLC too. It was just an absolutely amazing match. Uh, just some amazing spots there. Edge spearing Hardy off of uh, the belt he was hanging from. Damn good. Just a damn good match. It really set the tone for a new style of wrestling that was coming into WWE. And something that literally was popular enough to start its own pay-per-view eventually. So, Dudley boys, I mean, they are absolutely deserving. Absolutely. After that, you have Jimmy Hart comes out, and he's talking about his good friend, apparently, Hillbilly Jim. And Hillbilly Jim, unfortunately, at this point, he's a name that most people probably forget. I remember him in WrestleMania three. I was a young kid watching Hillbilly Jim. Uh, Hillbilly Jim and Hulk Hogan had this really good friendship, so, of course, it's a couple of larger-than-life personalities. Um... And me being a very little kid at the time, it was like, you know, he was a, just a cool person uh, in WWE F at the time. And so, I think unfortunately, you know, he was lost on a lot of people because a lot of people don't really know who he is in this day, I'm sure. And he was talking about how um, opportunity kind of describes his life and all the opportunities he's been afforded, you know, to get into WWE and being with WWE. Um, and I didn't know that his WrestleMania 3 match was actually uh, due to a leg injury. Uh, it was his first match back after a recovery period of quite some time, which I didn't know that. So that was kind of interesting. It was him and versus King Kong Bundy, and uh, they both had a couple of little guys with them on each side. Um, so, I mean, it probably wasn't the best speech or, like, the biggest moment of the night. But it was cool because, like I said, it's part of my childhood. Uh, next, Molly Holly inducts Ivory. And Ivory, uh, always very spunky chick that she is. Um, very peppy personality. I, I remember Ivory doing very good with the uh, whole right to censor gimmick and being very, you know, stiff-faced and rigid and uh, very prudish. And it worked very well. Like, she really ran that gimmick very, very well. Um, some of her uh, feuds with China and Lita were really, really good. 
So I, I felt like she was very deserving of being in the Hall of Fame, and I think that was a great choice um, for the women. Next, Road Dog inducts Jeff Jarrett, and I didn't realize how close these two were. But I also, you know, it, it was really something I never thought I'd see is Jeff Jarrett coming back to the WWE in any form or fashion. Uh, there was the big, you know, rumor that Jeff Jarrett had held up Vince McMahon for money for the Intercontinental Championship when he was leaving WWE. He also started TNA as competition for WWE. So to see Jeff Jarrett come back, uh, it was really cool. And he didn't talk about any of the controversial shit. He didn't talk about the IC title holdup. He didn't talk about TNA. He just, uh, you know, came in and talked about his career in WWE and some of the friendships he made. It was a very cool thing to see. Uh, it really was. Uh, at the end of his speech, Brian Road Dog comes out and uh, him and Jeff Jarrett, they're like, you know, singing and walking through the uh, Hall of Fame crowd and just, you know, singing one of the old songs that Jeff Jarrett used to have. Uh, after that, Triple H comes down, inducts Kid Rock, and I, I wasn't really sure how people were going to take to Kid Rock being inducted into the Hall of Fame. I heard some boos in the crowd a couple of times when they had talked about it. But they actually received him very well, and he actually gave a really cool speech about it. You know, he was talking about how the WWE has helped him and his music and, and pushed that out, and how hopefully he's um, been able to help the WWE in some way. And um, he's contributed a lot of music to uh, WWE. He performed at WrestleMania, he performed a tribute to the troops. He's put a lot of songs of his into theme songs for shows or superstars. So, um, it was, yeah, it was very cool. Um, you know, there was one moment where he was talking about body slamming some Democrats, and of course you get a lot of cheers and boos, and he's like, you know what, at the end of the day, we're all Americans, and we need to find some common ground and start liking each other again, and I thought that was a really cool thing to say. So I really liked that. I really did. I, I appreciated his uh, whole speech. I thought um, it was actually one of the better celebrity speeches, to be very honest. Um, Dana Warrior inducts Jarius Robertson for the uh, Ultimate Warrior Trophy. And, you know, I thought it was cool. I, I kind of like this. Uh, section of the Hall of Fame that they're doing now, people who, um, you know, fight against all odds and blah, blah, blah. I, I don't know it's necessarily should be named after the Ultimate Warrior. I, from what I've gathered from real life scenarios, he was actually kind of a prick. Um, and, you know, he had a heart attack and died. I mean, I, I don't know how that makes him a fighter, but whatever. Uh, I think the award itself is pretty cool, and this kid is a pretty good example of a fighter. He's somebody who was born with this rare condition that affects his liver. Uh, they said he was going to die very young. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, the doctors told his family to take him off life support, so they did, and he started breathing on his own. He needed a couple of liver transplants and was lucky enough to get both of them. After the second one, his health started to increase a lot. He started getting a lot better. Um, but apparently, he went through a lot of time being in pain and uh, suffering through a lot of things. And uh, this condition actually stunted his growth. So he's 16, but looks like he's much younger than that. And um, he had started this It Takes a Life to Save a Life campaign, talking about the importance of organ donation and uh, he's been you, so he took you know a bad situation and turned it into something very positive and uh, I'm always happy to see people do that so this Jarius Robertson kid was great he had a lot of personality up on stage he's just fun to see so I thought it was cool um, after that big show Paul White he inducts Mark Henry Mark Henry very deserving of course being in the Hall of Fame the guy is you know, been champion and one of the uh, most recognizable big guys in the company. So I thought that was cool. Um, he did a little sexual chocolate bit where he's, you know, making jokes with Stephanie McMahon. And uh, 
just having some fun with it. it. It was really cool. It really was. And then the last one of the night, Paul Heyman comes out and ducks Goldberg. And Goldberg, you know, I, I've always respected the fact that I, f I feel like he's being very genuine with uh, anything he says. And I could be wrong. I mean, the guy could be full of shit. I don't know him personally. But he comes across as genuine. And when he's talking about, you know, I, I've really learned to have an appreciation and a love for this business, it makes sense because, it, you know, he always said that, you know, he wanted to be a football player first. He made it to the NFL, got injured, couldn't cut it there. And so he was trying to figure out what to do, and Diamond Dallas Page got him into wrestling. He didn't know the first damn thing about wrestling. Um, and then over the years, you know, through his career, he's, he's really learned to have an appreciation for it. Um, especially after his latest run coming back to the WWE after so many years and winning the belt and uh, taking on Lesnar. So I really like that. And, you know, he, he had a moment there where he looked like he was getting kind of choked up, and that was cool. Uh, you don't really see it a lot. You don't even see it a lot in this speech. Uh, you, you know, just kind of get a couple of very brief glimpses where it looks like he's getting choked, and then he, you know, reels it back in, you know, man's man. Um, so, I mean, you know, I mean, Hall of Fame is what it is. It's a bunch of guys talking about their career. But I thought it was cool. And like I said, I thought it was a really cool lineup this year. Dudley Boys, damn sure deserve it. Mark Henry, Bill Goldberg, Jeff Jarrett, definitely deserving. I Ivory, and Hillbilly Jim, you know. I mean, I don't know that he's had the you know best WWE career as far as like winning belts or whatever you know, stuff he's done. But he's definitely an icon from an era that's gone now. And so, certainly somebody from my childhood that, you know, I, I really liked. So, Kid Rock and the Celebrity Wing, I thought that was a great choice. The Jerry's Robinson was a great choice. So, yeah, I mean, it was just a fun time. It was really long, man. It was like four and a half hours for this. But, um, you know, I, I stuck it out, watched the whole thing. And I, like I said, I did a live reaction to it, but I can't believe they blocked me. And honestly, it kind of makes my opinion of WWE as a whole go down because, honestly, I'm not fucking Meltzer. I'm not trying to be Meltzer, and I'm not going to get rich off of this. I am not. I don't even have enough subscribers to make any money. I do this because I love wrestling, and I like to share my love of wrestling. So to have a video blocked because you could hear Goldberg's voice in the background, get the fuck out of here with that shit. That's just stupid. Um, that's turning fans away from the product. Imbeciles? Like, honestly, it's stupid. You, all you're doing is turning fans away. You're taking the people that do uh, like your product, which, honestly, a lot of people nowadays watch, but, you know, don't seem to be the biggest fans. So why would you take people that are actually putting money into your product and be like, well, you know, we know you're doing this, but we're somehow in a way attached to this, so we don't want you doing it. it it's, it's become too corporate. I don't like that. When you forget about the fans and you forget about the people and you're more about um, the pennies that somebody might make, like literally pennies, you're, you're missing the point of what you're doing. So that's my thought. Anyway, for the Hall of Fame, uh, it was a good time for me. I liked it. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And if you enjoyed the review, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. Sorry it couldn't be the live reaction, but blame WWE for that. My name is Kevin Jackwitz, Cage Nation out.